Today I'm going to be showing you my entire design process for creating a brand identity from start to finish. I'll be creating a visual identity for a brand called Sunbliss. They're a sun cream company. This is not a real company, it's completely made up. I literally just made it for this YouTube video. But anyway, it is a sun cream company that's targeted to young women between the ages of 18 and 25. It's quite a fun and playful brand and it steers away from the whole minimalist look and feel and approach. For this brand identity, I'll be creating a primary logo, a secondary logo, brand colors, photography, style, a brand pattern, maybe a brand icon, and lastly, some packaging. Okay, so I'm gonna hide out in the corner over here so that you can see my screen while I am designing. So this is the process that I follow for when I'm designing a brand identity for a client. As I said, this is not a real brand or real company. It's just made up, make believe, but I do follow this process in real life. Okay, so the first step is to do research. So find out about target audience, their goals, their strategy, create a bunch of different mood boards and generate a look and feel. I also like to create a photography style and approach when I create mood boards at the same time that I'm doing like the overall mood board and approach just so that I can see everything like cohesively together. So when I'm creating a mood board I like to include the brand colors, some photography or visual imagery, maybe some patterns, maybe some icons and I also like to include the type of font that I'm looking for in the typography. Do I want something with an icon? Do I want it to be a logo type? So I like to sort of give an all-round approach to the mood board and really give the client an overall feel of what their brand could potentially look like. done with the mood board I then move on to generating the logo and that generally starts with fonts so I usually go through and find a bunch of different fonts that I think really will work well with the brand. After I've gone through and found my favorites, I then manipulate the type. Manipulating your typography is so awesome. And if you can learn to do that as a designer, you are going to open up so many doors to create some really awesome logos. A logo is not when you just type out the brand name and put it in a cool font. When it comes to logos, you should make it your own, make it unique, put it in your own style. There is so much that you can do with typography. That's why I love logo types because the possibilities are pretty much endless. And you don't even need a fancy font to do it. You can use Helvetica and create really cool fonts. I think I should actually make a video of that where like I take a really simple font and then show all the different ways that you can manipulate the typography. So yeah, you should really, really learn to do that, which is cool. When I manipulate type, I like to use the pencil tool and the pen tool and the pathfinder tool. So often I will use the pencil tool to do a rough sort of estimate. And if I can't get something, then I'll go in with the pen tool and then join it with the pathfinder tool. So I kind of use a collective of all of that together, but it's always nice to have like a base font to work with. And I also like to mix and match different fonts as well. For example, if I like the curve on the one letter of the one font and something on another font, then I will mix the two together. So with this brand, I want to do something that's pretty playful, curvy, curly, rounded. Obviously the brand is playful. I want it to have an illustrative approach, you know, a thick, bold pattern or shape, bright colors. Like that's where I see this brand going. I'm also feeling a logo type of this brand as I said yes with an illustrative approach and like bold blocky cool shapes and I almost want the shapes to give off the sense of being like shadows or like in water with like reflecting sunlight or water something like that you know so when I started creating this logo I found this really cool font that had this L with like a curvy shape and I really liked that curl and I decided to join the I and the S together because I felt like I just wanted to be kind of like clumped together almost like squeezed together lotion would come out of a tube and it's all like connected or something or when you squeeze it out like I wanted it to sort of be squished and like part of each other. That was just the idea that I sort of had. This font had a lot of sharp edges though, so I wanted it to be a bit more rounded and playful and not so angular and sharp. So I went through and rounded off a whole bunch of the edges. In between the letters, I obviously wanted them to be close, but I didn't want them to touch completely. So I put an offset path and I used my pathfinder and I cut that out just so that the letters could be close to each other and almost like intertwining, but not touching.
I then went back to my mood board and realized that some of them I had like a cool face so I tried to do a face visual in the B but I really wasn't feeling that at all and then I tried to do like a little flower thing but it actually just ended up looking like an orange slice or a wheel and I was like that is not it so then I decided to stack the logo instead of having it side by side and I really really liked how the stacked logo was starting to look so I was playing around with fitting that all in nicely I like to have my logos sort of compiled and lined up so I wanted to put this in more like a square sort of logo style. I'm still using my pencil tool to do all of the manipulation of the top. So I popped the provisional logo onto the color palette and I liked it but I realized then that I need to figure out what I want to do with the colors. So when I'm designing a logo I like to design it in black and white or gray first. I don't add any color until I finish the logo. Then I go in and I add all of the color because when you start adding color it's just a whole other complex issue. So when you're actually just designing the logo, it's best to do it just in black and white and not have to worry about color. Color should come after you've finalized your logo. After I'd finished the logo, figured out the color palette, I then started working on a brand pattern. Brand patterns are really cool because you can overlay them and multiply them onto social media posts. You can use them as backgrounds and backdrops, breaker slides. You can do so much with the brand patterns. So you get your primary logo. And then you get your secondary logo, which can be used for social media posts or on a business card or something where you don't need the full logo. I decided to use the S and B for the secondary logo. I then sourced a bunch of different shadow images from Unsplash, which is a free stock site. Obviously, this is not sponsored by Unsplash, but you know, if you need a good stock site, that's free stock that you can use. I sourced those and used them as a backdrop behind the logo and brand elements. onto the packaging so I did a SPF 50 bottle and then I did an SPF 30 tube so I designed it in Illustrator popped it into Photoshop and I couldn't find a nice mock-up so I just used an image that I sourced off of Unsplash which is a free stock image and I recolored it to make it more my brand colors and I did a quick edit here and there I also added a shadow to it to bring in that sense of like sun and being shaded and reminder to be in the shade which is also why I decided to stick with orange and pink as the primary colors for this brand because orange is kind of like a warning so by having orange it's kind of like a reminder to put your sun cream on so that was my thinking behind the colors so here I am mocking up the SPF 30 and I did the same approach but instead of multiplying the shadow I put it as an overlay which made it a bit more lighter so I did that and then I started compiling all the brand elements together and figuring out what I wanted to do with photography the reason you do a photography one is also for social media so if they have a, like an Instagram or Facebook or whatever you can provide examples of what it could potentially look like on their feed so that's why you do that my laptop just died Hold on. Okay, so I'm back. I let my laptop die, but it's alive again. I'm charging it. That's the great thing about Mac is I was recording this voiceover and my laptop died. And then when I switched it on again, it went straight into my Adobe Audition and it was still recording. <laughs> How crazy. <laughs> anyway, so it's all good. Nothing was lost. As I was saying, I always include a photography approach just so that the client can see what their social media could potentially look like, uh, their Instagram feed, Facebook, anything like that. So that's why I do that. Okay, so now that we have all sorts of stuff, we have our primary logo, secondary logo, brand pattern, packaging examples, photography style, icons, social media examples, and finally, so now you get to see the full brand identity in three, two, one.
video and if you want to learn some more graphic design tips for beginners or even design students check out this video and it will give you 13 of my most useful and helpful tips that can help you in your graphic design career in 2023. Have a great day, I'll see you soon. Bye!